Hello again, this is B. This is the sixth episode of the Endless Runner and the final one. Today we're going to spawn coins on top of the, some of the platforms. You can use any type of pickup. In my case, I wanted to add some coins and hook that up with the UI. As you can see in front of me, I have the character and right now I some pause and she's running and here I have some coins and if I push play there are more coins coming and the UI is being updated support me on Patreon to get the project files and subscribe to my channel it helps ok, let's do this as you can see I have some of the platforms that we implemented in the previous videos you remember these are the types that I'm spawning for the game and on top of that I'm spawning only three coins three coins each time I also have some rules applied to the way we spawn the coins so I only for example for this platform I only have these coins these ones in this lane I could have coins here or in this lane as well but I decided to just spawn coins on one of the lanes it's not only to to add some coins and to have some more exciting in this game it's also to show to the player uh, the path that it's going to follow like a heads up these coins I call them pickups because if you want it you can use any other type of pickup and add on top of this another type of lo uh, game logic for example uh, you can add pickups that makes the player to be invincible or maybe going faster or some obstacles so this is like a generic type of pickup very simple uh, it extends from a glass called pickup it's an actor and it has from the C++ class a root and a mess nothing new right here I added the collision important and as you can see right here it, it will overlap all dynamic so it will collide with the character if we go to the event graph I have some logic implemented on the on the pickup so for the collision I added an event using this menu as you can see I have this own component begin overlap uh, this time I decided to do it for Blueprint because there's no need really to do it on C++ but uh, it's really easy to translate something from Blueprint to C++ when you know what type of nodes or functions you need to use so basically I will do something similar in C++ with the own component begin overlap as soon as see the pickup the text or this collision this huge box detects a collision I'm gonna cast to the blueprint runner character which is my character then I'm getting the controller to see if it's the runner player controller because I want to add the I want to use the UI for that and remember the UI is uh, is created and added on the player controller after that, I explain play a sound at location. I have a sound right there. You can use any type of sound. And I have a blueprint implementable event called on collect coin because this is one the one I'm gonna use for the UI. I'll show that later. But this is how I hook the coin with the UI through the runner player controller after that to make sure that there is no more collisions I'm going to disable the collision for that I extract the collision and find the set collision enabled that one and I set that to not collision 
then just for fun I added a timeline animation timeline and scale the mesh so when the player collides with the pickup it will show a small animation to have a nice effect and not just disable that and it's very very simple to use an animation a timeline and animation for that you just need to add timeline that note over there and then you can start adding a curve so in this case if I open this one this is the time and time and value for the start time zero I have the value 1.5 and then it will do this curve and decrease until it's no, the, there is no scale at all. And I'm using this in total. The time is 0.54. Uh, so yeah, it will do something like it will start scale up, scaling up, and then scale down. Very nice effect. And for that, I'm just using the mesh. So that's basically the coin. I don't need to do the whole thing with the mesh. Is enough. It's just a visual effect. And I use the set wall scale 3D. So this timeline, it will give me the scale value or whatever I want to put here. This is custom. So the way you do this is you go there and then you add a flow track. And you can set here scale and start adding some keys. So yeah, we can add the then and then values one, and then we can add another one right there. Something like that to scale everything 1.5, and then we can finish right there and set that to zero. So the we can see we will have something similar. Like in my case, we can smooth this out if we use user, and we can set this user as well. So and then we can manipulate this, and we will have this nice thing. So it's, this timeline is very very useful when you want to do these type of effects and you don't want to code this because this will be a nightmare to code and it's not really good way to do it. So as you can see here, I have the scale and this is the timeline, similar to what I have here. So basically I take the scale and I use them for all of that. When the timeline finishes, I have a small delay to detach the whole actor from from the platform because I tend to every time I spawn elements what I do I tend to do is to attach to the actor so I will have everything inside an actor and not everything on the on the wall like while so I like to do that and finally I just set the visibility to false let's review now the pickup code and as you can see there is nothing that is the root and the mesh and that's all I have for the pickup. Nothing else. I don't need anything else. Let's move on now to the runner play controller. And here I have that blueprint callable event on collect coin. This is this one. Collect coin. If we go to the implementation, on collect coin, all it does is add one to the coins collected which is just a normal variable int variable that starts in zero and i add one and basically i call update coins to the ui and the update coins it just basically update the text of the coins counter that is on the on the widget blueprint now, I spawn the pickups on the module and that's happening every time I spawn a new module or platform. 
So if we go to the game controller, the first place I can find that is in the initialize game. That's the first time I press play. And right after I spawn a platform, I will go spawn pickup. So this is the, the platform and then I'm sp uh, spawn pickups. And I'm, I'm sending this platform count, which is the number of platforms to that have been sp uh, up spawned. And this is just because I'm not going to spawn pickups uh, just for, for the first platforms. I'm calling this pen, this method, in on the tick when this method spawn new, new platform uh, which is happening on the tick when the player reaches the the end of one of the platforms remember that I remove the, one of the from the behind and then I add a new one so I'm doing the, the same and finally let me show you how to spawn these pickups it's nothing complex we go to the module or the platform here we have these spawn pickups and I also want to destroy the pickups on this destroy module which is also called from the game controller. For the pickups I have all of these EU properties which are editable on the on the blueprint of for each platform and I have distance between lanes, I have the pickup class which is the blueprint for the coin. And then I have an array of pickups. I also have these two to help me when I spawn every pickup. The module or the platform also have some sub components. I added these using components like lens 0, 1, and 2 to help me when I spawn the pickups. On the constructor, I basically add those modules and I call them lane 0, 1 and 2. If we go to one of the blueprints for the module, for example this bridge, you can see that I have lane 0, 1 and 2. And this is just a helper to know where I'm going to spawn the three pickups. For the settings, I have the pickup class, mistake there, uh, that, that's the blueprint, so coins. Okay. So let's go to spawn pickups and I have some rules and I'm using the module type to see if, uh, where to spawn the pickups because remember we have different type of modules we have two bridges, we have crown and bridge two bridges for example is where I'm not going to spawn any pickups because we could do it but I decide not to and it's basically because I have two bridges and in the middle I have a hole so um, I decide not to. And then, depending on if we have the ground or the bridge, we will spawn in one lane or the other, depending on the next platform. Remember, I'm linking each module or platform with the next module or platform. And also, I have a link to the previous one. So, this is useful for this is very useful when I'm going to spawn the pickups. This parameter, remember, it's just to set, I said it's the difficulty or the number of platforms. If this is minus five, I'm not gonna spawn any pickups, so as soon as press play, we won't have any pickups. Uh, we will have new pickups on the fifth platform. I have some default variables here, this is just to set by default the length one, and we cannot spawn any pickups. Rule number two. If the module type of this module is two bridges, we won't spawn any pickups. The platform, that specific platform is these two bridges. So we have one bridge there and one bridge there. We could just spawn one coin here and one coin here, but this is just design decision. You can do any other rules. Now, at this point, I'm going to use these switch to, to apply the rest of the rule. If the, the module type is ground or two bridge, which basically they are similar, the only difference is the visual, depending on the next 
platform module and one spawn to pick up on one lane or the other. If any of these three next platforms, uh, the small bridges, which are the bridges that are smaller than the normal one, and they could be on the right side, on the left side, or on the center. I'm gonna decide which is the lane that I'm gonna spawn the pickup. If the next module is none of them, I'm just gonna select any random lane. This is because if we have bridge, the next one could be the ground, so it will spawn whatever. If the case is not this one or this one, we just have three more cases, which is the small pickups. And in this case, all we have to do is to select the, the correct lane. Finally, here is when we spawn the pickups. We use this boolean to to go through all this process and if everything goes okay, we will spawn a pickup. With this variable, we take the location of the lane where, where we want to spawn the pickup. And finally, we will spawn three pickups. So we just need to do a normal spawn. We use the pickup class or the blueprint and we set the actor location with this position first will be this the the lane location and for the rest ones i will use this uh, editor blueprint variable editor variable and move the next one to this position and we will have three and that's it that's all we have to do with the spawning pickup finally the destroy module, I have this or to destroy the modules from the pickup. So I basically call destroy and it will destroy all of them. The last thing I want to show is on the pickup. I'm using a very handy component that Unreal provides to rotate the pickups. If we go to the pickup and the viewer, I'm using this rotating movement component which is it will make everything move the in rounds and continuously and I basically add this component just like that uh, by default I left everything by default so everything will be ready to see the component rotated or the pickup if I play the game you will see the result Right there we have the pickups and you can see that they're rotating and also the logic that I implemented works. And that's it, that's the end of the video and also the end of this game. This is basically the start of a runner, you can add more things, you can add more obstacles, different type of platforms, more pickups and make this more interesting. But this is a start, a really good start point if you want to implement and learn how to do this type of game. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Like, share, and subscribe. And thanks to my patrons to, for support with me. See you, see you next time on the next video. Bye.